Hey traders, my name is Matt. Welcome to this week's FX Commodities and Crypto Weekly Game Plan, where we break down all of the news, narratives, economic events, and charts to have you ready and prepared for this week's markets. Starting with what's in the news this week or the news that matters, we have a lot of the things happening in China right now. There's a bit of a COVID outbreak that's occurring, which is going to be uh, happening in several provinces across the country. And why this matters to me is that we're already on the verge of what I believe to be an economic slowdown in China. Lots of things happening in the property market there, uh, manufacturing sector, supply chain issues. Uh, I think this is going to be a little bit of an accelerant to that uh, economic slowdown that we have that's sitting on the cards, and that could definitely accelerate things in that sector. Uh, obviously, debt defaults still on the cards. When we look at the debt defaults in China, we know that they are a problem. That still hasn't left um, the issues at hand, although we're not seeing much of it in the news headlines anymore. News seems to have moved on, but I believe this is still an a event that is unfolding and that could have some serious consequences for China and for the global economy in general, because an economic slowdown in China, especially one that is uh, matched with an economic slowdown in the US is all going to lead to what I believe going to be a deflationary shock to the global economy. So that's something we definitely have a close eye on as it stands. Um, and part of that, we have this new property tax that's been introduced by Xi Jinping. It's basically part of their common prosperity drive. And it's obviously going to have a impactful uh, or negative impact on the Chinese property sector, which is already under serious heat. I know we spoke about this last week where we have a central bank report that's come out. It came out in April 2020. So these numbers are a little bit outdated, but just shows you how bad things have gotten since then or how things could really accelerate. We have home ownership in China uh, reaching around 96% uh, in comparison to places like the US, which has a home ownership rate of 65%. Some of the developed nations, New Zealand, 63, United Kingdom, 62, or 63 as well. So there's a huge amount of property or a huge amount of Chinese investors are sitting in um, property as their major investments. And that survey went on to say uh, household assets are mainly physical assets. Housing accounts for nearly 70%. So a lot of Chinese assets or Chinese asset ownership is in the property market and house ownership rates, 96%. We have 10% of households owning three or more properties, which is a huge number. And again, if we start to see that economic slowdown, that's going to have major effects on the debt issue, the debt situation happening there because it becomes makes debt defaults more likely. And as we see here, another part of that survey is the first financial, um, the financial asset liability ratio of households is relatively high and there's a certain degree of liquidity risk. So if prices start to drop, that will snowball into lower prices as people try to unwind their position in the housing market. And then again, that could lead to a serious property crash, which I believe is coming and is going to be part of that big deflationary shock that I'm expecting in China. Second, the debt risk of some households is relatively high. Some low asset households are insolvent and the risk of default is high. Keeping in mind, this was last year already before all of the issues we started to see across the Chinese manufacturing sector. The young and middle aged groups, which is most of the Chinese population, the Chinese population is the middle age um, and higher. The groups are under high debt pressure and debt risk is high. So there's a serious debt risk in China. COVID making it worse. Uh, the debt defaults happening in the property sector, leaning into that and where the debt is actually higher is in the manufacturing sector. And if we start to see a slowdown in the US, we start to see a slowdown in China, we see the supply chain issues really starting to affect smaller firms. This could really unwind into a major event. And that's what I'm seeing in the charts, which we'll get to later. Um, some bullish news coming out of China is the tech crackdown coming to an end. Uh, some reports in Bloomberg um, talking about the hint that the Chinese uh, top financial regulator expect to achieve significant progress in the ongoing crackdown. We're starting to see a bottom in these Chinese tech stocks. We're starting to get bullish Chinese tech. Um, 
and we're starting to get interested in those charts, especially something like Tencent, which we'll show you the chart of later on, could be a great buy. Uh, NASPERS for South African traders and investors, that could be a great buy. We've been calling that bottom for the last two weeks or so, and price has basically double bottoms and started to rally, which we saw this week. Moving on to the US, we're still, still having a look at the effects of the supply chain crisis. A lot of people calling for this to be an inflationary matter. So far, it has been a big inflationary matter. But we also need to think about the economic damage that it's causing and how many of these smaller mom and pop shops are going to be able to sustain themselves with the supply chain crisis is not allowing them to bring in stock of whatever it is they sell. So I believe it's an inflationary thing to start off with, but then needs to a serious glow, uh, economic slowdown later on as you start to see these smaller firms fold under the pressure of the supply chain crisis. So we'll be watching that pretty closely. And then obviously the energy crisis still an issue, still in the headlines and something we'll be watching closely. One thing in particular, which is going to have major global effects, is fertilizer, fertilizer prices driving, uh, driving higher. As you can see on this little chart, fertilizer prices basically bottomed in April and started to take off pretty strongly. And why that's important is because fertilizer is a massive part of the production of rice and corn, which is basically the staple diets of a lot of the third world. And if the third world starts to see food inflation continue the way it has, then that's going to be a major problem. And as we can see in this second chart, which is kind of longer dated fertilizer prices, we saw this rally kind of from 2002 up to 2008, but we got really strong uh, into 2008, 2009, which eventually led to the spring Arab uprising, which as you remember, had to do with prices of bread and staple foods in emerging markets. So if we start to see fertilizer prices up in those 2009 regions. We know there's going to be some civil unrest in the third world. And again, we speak about this all the time. We believe an EM debt crisis is coming and this food inflation is going to have just an accelerating effect on that. Um, and that is really going to start to unwind moving forward forward. Moving on to the economic calendar, Tuesday we have the Richmond Fed Manufacturing Survey. As you see here, we kind of bearish for that. We believe we're going to see a bit of a recession occurring in the US, or at least an economic slowdown, not necessarily a recession, but definitely an economic slowdown. And we may start to look for hints of that in the uh, Richmond Fed manufacturing survey. Obviously, with the supply chain issues, manufacturing is going to take a hit. And again, these things are just kind of snowballing into bigger and bigger issues. And as we see uh, in this chart, the Dallas Fed numbers kind of topped out two, three months ago, and we've started to see a little bit of a downtrend since then. We suspect that downtrend is going to continue moving forward with the way things are unfolding in the US. Um, and it could be a big sign that we are heading towards kind of more the stagflation than inflation that everyone's talking about. Stagflation being big inflation, but where economic growth can't support that inflation, economic growth starts to slow. And to me, that's going to be a global phenomenon, high inflation, low growth, and that's going to lead to dollar strength, which you've already been seeing since basically January, where we called for the bottom of the dollar, and the dollar is still at that region. Last week, we called for a little bit of a weaker dollar. We started to see that last week. We think maybe that's going to occur again this week, but that's kind of on the fence. We'll take another look at the charts later on, and we'll get more clarity there. Another big economic event coming up is the PCE, the core PCE, which is with a number the Fed uses, the inflation figures the Fed uses to determine its inflation um, and its policy moving forward. As you can see, basically middle of 2020, we started to see a big, big move in inflation to the upside. It's kind of flatlined the last two, three months. Um, but what we've been seeing in the supply chain, I believe we're going to see a little bit more inflation moving forward. I'm still a transitory, uh, in team transitory. I expect inflation figures to start to peak over the next few months, and that'll turn around back to that deflation as the economic slowdown starts to occur as a result of these high prices and inflation. So it's kind of going to feed on itself, and eventually inflation is going to turn to disinflation at the very least. And it's all part of that economic slowdown. Um, largely caused by inflation in the first place, um, where there's no economic growth to support the inflation, especially in the third world, um, which we're already starting to see across the board. We're seeing Brazil going into a bear market. We called for Brazil to go into a bear market in March. That's happening now. They technically went into a bear market down 20% from June highs. And we believe that's going to continue unfold into emerging markets. So big, big things happening. And 
again, I believe this is going to move into a deflationary shock moving forward. Tuesday, we also have new home sales coming out, another indication of what's happening in the US economy. If you, your home sales start to slow down, you might find that the consumer is under pressure. It would be a good clue that the consumer is under pressure. We have Aussie Q3 inflation figures. We can see the effects of inflation in the Aussie dollar. We have durable goods orders, another hint for what's happening in the US and the US economy. If that number starts to roll over, we can start to see that economic slowdown unwind. We have Bank of Canada interest rate decision. We have the BOJ interest rate decision and ECB interest rate decisions. A lot of these guys, I don't think we'll be making any moves just yet. So don't expect any changes there. And then GDP figures from the US coming out on Thursday. I know the Fed was looking for GDP figures upwards of 7% moving forward. But if GDP figures uh, from the last quarter start to show a bit of weakness, I don't think the Fed's figures are going to hold up and we might start to see a change in narrative there. So those are important too. We also have GDP figures coming out of Europe and like we said, core PCE coming out on Friday, which is going to be a big number um, to see what the, again, Fed in taper um, and Fed tightening strategy is moving forward. We're going to keep a close eye on that. We've got a little bull here. I believe PCE is going to come out higher than expected. It's going to be bullish for the dollar. Um, but again, time will tell. We'll have to wait and see what the charts say. We do believe the dollar is strength is going to continue moving forward. It's just a matter of is that going to start to occur earlier than we think or are we going to run through the rest of the year, which kind of what the chart is saying a move for the rest of the year in dollar strength. But again, that's kind of on the fence. We'll get to the charts next and we'll run through that moving forward. Starting with the dollar, we remain kind of short-term dollar bears with the DXY in a little bit of a corrective structure. It was kind of overcooked up at this 94.50 region. We're starting to see a little bit of a pullback there. We suspect that pullback is going to get down towards kind of minimum 92 to 40 and potentially all the way down to the 90 handle. But again, I don't think we're going to get all the way down there. I'm more inclined to believe we should start to share a uh, see a turnaround at this 92 level and start to see that dollar bull market really come into its own and really start to end uh, either end the year or start next year with a really really strong move how that's going to translate into the euro is a kind of shift up towards 118 119 minimum potentially as high as 121 but again i don't really see how we're going to get all the way up to the 121 handle but it is definitely a possibility and again if we zoom out take a look at the structure from a classic charting point of view you can see we do have quite an interesting looking head and shoulders structure that is broken through the neckline is now coming back to retest that neckline as a classic head and shoulders always does. And then a turnaround from there will be a confirmation of that topping pattern, uh, in which case we see the euro really starting to tumble from these levels. So we're watching for that euro there. Our caveat to the dollar weakness story in the short term is that it does seem that it's only going to be kind of driven by things like the euro, uh, maybe the Swiss as well. Uh, kind of the more commodity looking countries like the Aussie already look to have turned. They look like they're ready to turn to the downside. Uh, we had a really big bearish engulfing candle um, on Thursday and then kind of a continuation little structure that's formed there on the lower time frames. And we do believe this is going to be a continuation of uh, Aussie dollar weakness and basically all the commodity com uh, currencies looking to fall, New Zealand dollar, US dollar, another one, structurally speaking, just looks ready to tumble from here. Nice little ABC corrective structure that is now complete and a big bearish engulfing that occurred on Thursday as well. US dollar CAD is another one breaking out of this lower time frame rising wedge. Um, just ignore these little arrows. This is for members. A little bit of a break and retest of this rising wedge and potentially going to be breaking up to the upside from here, coming out of what we believe to be a bit of an expanding triangle correction there. Very, very messy. But at the same time, as we always say, go to the higher time frames, higher time frame charts always have preference. And as you can see, we have this big ABC corrective structure that indicates new highs on the CAD heading into next year, uh, potentially 2023. But we do believe this bull market in the dollar is going to start to gain some legs moving forward. And as we're seeing in commodity currencies, uh, it looks like it's going to start in commodities. And again, that could have something to do with China as basically the um, demand for commodities really starts to drop off there as a result of economic slowdown and a potential debt uh, crisis occurring in the housing market there. US dollar Swiss still looks good for some short-term 
um, short-term strength uh, or short-term weakness for the US dollar, heading down towards our profit target. This has been a good trade for us uh, and should bottom out, which in turn, we're gonna switch this around back to a long trade, trading this back up to the highs at around about 94, 95, somewhere around there. And then US dollar yen, another trade that's worked out really well for us in the opposite direction. Nice little hedge that's worked out in both directions. That looks like it's just gonna be in a little bit of a corrective move around about here uh, before heading higher. And as you guys know, if you follow me, we are yen bulls. Uh, we're going to turn into yen bulls at some point. That's coming fairly soon, we believe, as the kind of risk off or um, trade in the yen starts to gain its feet once again. We do believe the yen's going to rally. And that's why we have to be really cautious of this little yen move because we've already gone beyond our little minimum that we believe that the trade was going to get up to and we started to see a little bit of downside there so if this starts to accelerate further to the downside or indicates further downside on the lower time frames then we'll definitely be switching towards uh, our yen bullish um, structure our yen bullish perspective and we'll see that unfolding especially in the other commodity currencies which we'll get to in the members area silver is another one showing uh, some strength, but again, short-term strength to me. You're seeing silver rallying pretty hardly or pretty hard, but it's gone right into this region where we believe the structure could come to an end. We've crossed the minimums of what we're expecting. Um, so basically anything up towards the 26 area now becomes a place for a turnaround to the downside. So we'll be watching this pretty closely. And again, if you zoom out, you're getting this little bit of a break, head and shoulders, neckline break retest the neckline and then plummet from there we believe silver is going to be going very very far down from where it is now over the coming year year and a half and uh, we believe sub 10 is definitely on the cards potentially as low as four dollars on silver and to me that's just falling uh, commodity demand as a result of what's happening in china so we'll be watching that gold pretty similar big big close to the downside yesterday pretty close to a bearish engulfing candle um and quite a large wick on the daily, as you can see. We believe all of this is just corrective. I think gold's actually going to come down sooner than silver. We're going to head down towards kind of 1680 in gold, probably over the coming days and weeks. Um, from there, probably a little bit of a rally and then a fall. But again, probably you're going to see gold head down into this region. You're going to see China's debt crisis really kick in when gold is in this region down here. You're going to see a kind of temporary rally in gold. As that, debt un as that crisis unwinds and then gold's really going to go back towards its deflationary moves to the downside. So watching for that in gold moving forward. That's very speculative as you can see, very early call, but keep an eye on this one. I'm pretty sure uh, things are starting to um, play out in this fashion. Copper, big, big close in copper. If we go to the weekly, you'll see a big weekly engulfing candle um, or big, big uh, kind of drop on the weekly candle there and the daily just showing a really big move to the downside um, so i believe copper has seen its highs for the year and we're on the down stroke now for copper and this should start to accelerate as we come out of this corrective move so expect a move back down to the lows at 394 sub four and then once again you're getting this head and shoulders type structure we just completed the right shoulder that's going to drop um, and we'll see a drop down here, a move higher as a retest, which is going to be your E-wave. And then we'll see a fall from there. So down towards, I guess, 380, 370, a secondary rally from there up to retest the neckline and then a move down from there. So watch for that. And platinum, I believe, has turned as well. Big kind of uh, high wick candle there to the upside. And we should see some downside in platinum with a really, really clean structure. This should also start to accelerate. So watch commodities this week. I do believe precious metals are really going to start to tumble moving forward. Some other charts that are interesting, UK oil, watching oil continue to rally. Uh, nice little trade. Yeah, oil's performed really well for us this year. Um, some really good trades. And we do suspect we're going to see $100 oil moving forward. And in the higher time frames, we suspect that's going to be the highs in oil. Um, somewhere in that region, maybe higher than 100 but kind of 104, 110, somewhere up there is going to be the highs. We're going to turn around and see a big dump in oil as that global commodity slowdown really comes into play. And then natural gas, which has a massive impact on the price of fertilizer. Uh, I kind of have the impression that we've topped out here. We've got a bit of a structure that's formed, got a nice little ABC corrective structure. And then from there, we've seen quite a big dip um, 
three candles in a row to the downside. This last wick was a little bit interesting. We go to the dailies, you can see how it's all looking a little bit corrective for further downside in my view. Uh, and again, you've got this kind of head and shoulders top. This is a little break and retest of the neckline um, and natural gas may begin to fall. But again, such high momentum to the upside, you have to be really cautious trading short here. But I believe anything beyond kind of $5 to the downside, you may definitely see a bigger move to the downside and a good indication that we're starting to see a peak in these, uh, these big commodity prices. The Renminbi potentially a double bottom forming here. We look at the MACD divergence that we have here and a structure that indicates a weakening of the Renminbi against the US dollar moving forward. We've seen the Mexican peso holding up really strongly here, but a structure that says a turn to the upside happening fairly soon. Uh, it's just a matter of what's happening on these time frames here. Are we going to test the lows once more, head down towards kind of 19 before rallying, or have we already seen a turn? It's a little bit of a kind of a rounding bottom that's forming here, um, which is an indication of a potential turnaround, but nothing conclusive just yet. Singapore dollar, pretty big strong move off the lows. Um, that's still holding up pretty strongly here, but it looks corrective in this area for further upside. So you can see these emerging market currencies and then US dollar czar, which got a, took a hammering to end the week last week. If you go to the dailies, just see the size of these candles to end the week. Big bullish engulfing candle and a continuation candle after that. You can see how uh, the US dollar against the czar is really starting to rally here. And we believe uh, kind of contrary to what a lot of the markets are saying, that we're going to see new highs up in 19 in the US dollars are potentially as high as 24. If you look at our structures and our models, what to expect there. So we'll be keeping an eye on that. And obviously the Korean one is another big one. Uh, structurally speaking, the lower time frames show a little bit of a turnaround here. You can see a little bit of a double bottom here. We'll see a rally up towards kind of 1220, a move back down. All of that is going to be one big corrective structure. And then after that, we're going to see a big move to the upside. And that's going to be a confirmed breakout of a going all the way to the monthlies, a massive wedge or triangle structure that kind of started with the end of the global or the Asian financial crisis and is going to end with another Asian financial crisis, um, a more global crisis at that moving forward, we believe. So very, very interesting. And then finally, crypto, uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin doing its thing, making new highs, pretty worrying candles that we've seen since then, some worrying structures. When we look at the price structure, we have this big move down, a one, two, three up. It's possible we get a little bit of a one, two, three down, down towards 40. It's also possible we get a move sub 20. That's also a potential. It's a kind of a wild card, but I wouldn't be surprised if we saw this uh, market go sub 20, especially if we start to see a kind of global crisis unfold. Um, that would be a kind of bottom and the really uh, the buy of a generation because we won't see 20 again. We're going to see uh, probably 100 uh, long, not long after we see that 20 as every, basically emerging markets flood into Bitcoin to try and save themselves, save their currency or save their net worth from a currency collapse, a collapse in emerging market currencies. Uh, so watch for that. Also possible that the corrective move is actually just a more localized one in this region. And we see a move basically down towards kind of 40 to start to form a bigger triangle. So Bitcoin likes to form these triangles on the higher time frames. Got this one, two, three down, one, two, three up. Nice structure for a triangle. One, two, three down towards 40, one, two, three up, and then one last down. And then that'll be upside from there. So it's kind of early days, very speculative to see. And then obviously another option is that we've just taken off already. And this was the C wave of this higher time frame structure that we were calling for at the beginning of the year, basically, uh, where we were going to expect to see an ABC corrective structure form and Bitcoin dip towards kind of sub 20. It has done enough to complete the structure. It actually makes it a kind of contracting flat, what we call um, in price structure world, which means the next move up is going to be a very, very strong one. But again, it's not a kind of a set in concrete just yet because of the structures we're seeing, especially on these lower time frames. but we'll be watching that. So I remain cautiously bullish um, and watching price action this week very closely to maybe close my position and get in at a lower level moving forward. And pretty much the same thing for Ethereum, uh, same pretty much, pretty much the same structures that we're seeing there and the same potentials uh, in terms of price action and price moves. So crypto kind of unclear 
but cautiously bullish, as I said. That's cool, guys. That's this week's game plan. Lots to, uh, lots to unwind and to take in, but there's some great opportunities on the table and definitely some money to be made in the trades and investments moving forward. Uh, we'll be looking to release our new investors section, uh, our investor subscribers section on our website this week where guys that don't really have the time or the money to get involved in the trading section and learn to trade, you will be able to get into the investors section where we start to break down some longer term investment opportunities for your portfolio and advise you on your portfolio um, for people that don't really have the time to keep constant tabs on the market. So that's what we, we're gonna be here for. We're gonna keep tabs on the market for you and present you with the best opportunities that we can find. Traders, we'll see you in the trading room tomorrow. If you guys would like to sign up to learn to trade, learn the price structure analysis, which has proven to be one of the most accurate forms of technical analysis on the market today, check out the link below. We'll get involved there. And check, check us out on Twitter, at Senecalytics. Uh, and our website senecalytics.com you can find everything there including our twitter handle at the bottom of the page it's cool guys hope you have a great week and we will see you next week members see you tomorrow morning for our strategy session we'll be looking at the trades that will be lining up for this week take it easy guys much love